Hi everyone, I'm Jo Barker Logi and welcome to a new demo. Today we're going to learn a bezeling technique and we're going to bezel a beautiful 12 millimeter cushion cut crystal. I'm trying not to get my fingers over it so that you can actually see some of the sparkle. So it's like a rounded square and it's 12 millimeters in size and I'm going to show you how to do just a plain bezel around it, but then I'm also going to show you how to turn it into a really pretty earring like that with a little drop on the bottom. So we'll bezel the cushion crystal and then I'll show you how to do the embellishment around the sides, adding in the ear wire and the crystal drop on the bottom. I start off as we always do by looking at our ingredients for this little project. And I guess the star of the show is this lovely 12 millimeter cushion cut cabochon. And this is in jet, jet, which is in color for black, the name for black. Then to do the ordinary bezel around it, to encase it as there are no holes on this, but it's got a pointed back. I'm going to use size 11s, just regular round size 11 seed beads. And these are Duracoat Silver Lined Dark Charcoal. I will list all the materials that I've used in the description. So if you want to check back, just click on the little box below and you'll get all the materials that I've used. And I'm going to use a size 15. So I've got an 11 and a 15. And these little 15s are galvanized gray luster. Then when it comes to the embellishment around the outside, I'm going to use another 15, and these are the black. And I'm going to use two lots of bicones. I've got a three mil here, and these little three mil bicones are black diamond. And I've got a four mil, which you can see on the four corners here. And the four mil is in jet. And then I've got this lovely drop pendant, and that's in jet hematite. It's got a really lovely shine to it, and that is six by 10 mils. Then I've got my shepherd's hook. I've got a beading needle. You can use a 10 or a 12. 12 is easier to get through these little 15s multiple times. And then I'm using black satin six pound fire line, but you can use your chosen beading thread. I've also got my thread zapper not too far away so that I can end off any threads as I go along. So that's all the materials for our project today. Right, so you'll start by threading on a meter of your thread onto your needle. And then I've zoomed in so that you can see the sequence that we pick up. And we're just using the 11s and the 15s for now. And you're gonna pick up five 11s, four 15s, five 11s, four 15s, five 11s, four 15s, five 11s, four 15s. So your five 11 and four 15s is a sequence that you pick up four times in a row. Then you're gonna move them down towards the end of your thread, leave yourself a 10 centimeter tail, and you're going to pass through all those beads again from the bottom to the top. So I'm just moving them down my thread leaving myself 10 centimeters that I can weave away at some stage of the project. And then I'm gonna pass my needle up through the beads from the bottom to the top. Now, if you can do it in one go, one, you've got a very long needle, two, you blinking amazing. <laughs> so if you need to do it in patches, just like I'm doing, there's no problem with that. So you're coming back to where your tail thread is, making sure that you pass through all the beads, otherwise you're gonna have some thread showing on the outside of your bead. And I'm actually going to come, there I am to where my tail is, but I'm gonna come one bead past my tail, so I'm gonna be exiting the first 11. Pull your thread through. There you have your first ring. The little 15s are gonna be your corners and the 11s are gonna be your sides. So we're now ready to start peyote. And I think we'll zoom in for this just to show you. So I'm exiting 
my thread is exiting an 11. I'm going to pick up an 11 and peyote is all about picking up a bead, skipping over the next bead and then passing through the very next one. Tail is going to drive me scatty. So there we have our first two beads together. Now I'm going to pick up another 11. I'm still on the side. Skip over a bead and I'm passing through the 11 that is just ahead of my 15s on my first corner. So if I pull my threads through tight now, you'll see that I always talk about it being a hopscotch pattern. I used to play hopscotch as a little girl where you bouncing, hopping across two, one, two, one, as you go up the ladder pattern. <clears throat> so now we've come to our first corner. That's our first side. And we've come to our first corner with our 15s. We're going to pick up one 15. And we're going to go through two 15s. So Again, we've skipped over one. There's my thread coming out of the 11. Skip over the first 15 and go through two. And then we're gonna pick up another 15 and we're gonna skip over the fourth one, the fourth 15, and we're gonna go through the first 11 on the other side. That's our first corner complete. So we've got one side and one corner complete. And we're now going to do the next side. So we're back to our 11s and we're going to pay OT1. Pay OT2. And we're at our second corner where we're going to repeat exactly what we did on the first corner. So we're going to pick up 115, skip over the first 15 and pass your needle through the middle two. Pick up another 15, skip over the last 15 and pass through the first 11 on the other side. So now we've got a side, a corner, a side and a corner done. We've got two more sides and two corners to do exactly the same way. So you'll be peyoteing two 11s on the sides and two 15s into the corner. But remember on the corners you go slightly differently. So I've just added in my first 15 on my fourth corner. I've picked up Another 15, I'm going to skip over the fourth 15, go through the 11 just on the other side, and then we need to step up to start round three. And you're going to step up through that first 11 that you added in round two. So you now have a sticky outy bead. Great technical term. You're stepping up through the first sticky outy bead. And you have round two complete, ready to go onto round three. Now, you can continue to hold onto your tail and weave it away at the end, but it is driving me scatty. So at this stage, I'm going to pop my needle off my working thread, stick it onto my tail, and I'm going to weave my tail through the hopscotch maze just to get rid of it so that it's out of the way. And then I can join you back to start on round three. All right, here we go. I'm ready to start round three and your thread should be exiting from one of your sticky outy 11s after your step up. So we're on the side, we're gonna start with an 11. Pick up an 11 and now it's really easy to see where you're going because you can see all these sticky outy beads and you know that that's exactly where you're gonna be passing through. So one 11 through the next 11. Pick up another 11, and you're going to go through that first little sticky outy 15. Now, to bridge the gap between these two 15s here, we're going to pick up one 15 and go straight through the next sticky outy. And this is going to pull things in a little. 
you need to be pulling your thread in the whole time and your work will start to curl up, but that's fine. It's what we want to happen. And we're bringing things in a little by just adding in that 115. We're now back to the side where we're going back to our 11s. So you're going to pay OT1. Peyote 2 and Peyote a third 11. So that's three 11s down the sides. You're now through one of the 15s on the corner. You're going to pick up one more 15 and pass through the next sticky arty 15. So now we've done a side, a corner, a side, a corner. We've got two more sides and corners. So it will be three 11s, 115 in the gap, three 11s, 115 in the gap. And I'll join you for the step up. I've come all the way around. I've got my last 11 to add in in this round. So I've just finished the fourth corner. Pick up an 11 and you go through the 11 that sits just in front of the sticky outy one that you added at the start of round three, and then you step up through that sticky outy as well and pull your thread in tight. Right, you can see how my work is predominantly flat, but it is starting to curl. Now, this outer edge is a lot wider than the inside edge. So this inner edge is where we're headed to now, and that will be what forms the top or catches on the top of our cushion cut crystal. So you need to flip around to be able to bead on that inner edge. And I'm going to just zoom out to do this. So I'm gonna turn my work over. And now as long as I bring my thread, I'm changing direction, as long as I bring my thread straight across and bead up through those 11s, so that I'm now exiting the sticky outy 11, the thread is going to get gobbled up in that intersection there, straight across from the beads. So now I am exiting an 11 on the inside edge. And it's time to bring this edge right in now, because otherwise our cabochon, let's just bring it here, will just pop straight through. It is starting to take shape and it looks like it might be secure, but if we cinch it in a little bit more, it's going to make that top edge really safe and secure. You don't want to be losing your crystal while you're wearing it. You might be making it into a ring and not an earring like we're going to do, and it would be awful if it just popped out while it was on your finger. So to cinch it in now, we're going to drop down to our 15s. We've been using mainly, or the majority of our work has been done in 11s, and by using 15s, it's just gonna pull everything in a little bit tighter. So let's move that crystal out the way again. <clears throat> now, we're going to use just our 15s and going into the sticky outies. So we pick up one, and we go into that little 15 that's sticking out on the corner there. And all the while we'll be pulling our threads in. Now we're gonna pick up one. And we're gonna go through the little 15 that's on the other side. So you're kind of skipping over those two in the middle. Sorry, didn't realize I'd moved out of camera. So through the little 15 on the other side. And you can, you can see how those 15s really come in on that inner edge. Pick up a 15 and we're now going, moving through the 11s down this edge. So just going through the sticky arties. All the while pulling your thread in.
corner, back to a corner. So there you can see we've come down the side. We've got a neat little corner here, making a nice square. We're back to a corner. We're going to pick up 115 and bridge the gap across to the 15 on the other side. Pulling in all the while. Now I'm going to come up the side, across the corner, across that side and into the corner and I'll meet you when we're ready to step up. So it's just 115 into each little bead that's sticking out, whether it's an 11 or a 15 on the corner. I've just picked up my last little 15 and I'm stepping up through the 11 that sits just in front of the first 15 I added in this round and through the 15, that first one that I added in this round. So remember, give everything a nice little tug and you can see you've got quite a neat little square on that inside edge there. <coughs> and if you pop it over your crystal, that top edge is going to be quite safe, but it's still looking pretty flat. So we need to change direction again and get to the back of our work so that we can now encase the back of the crystal. So again, uh, let's get this in focus. There we go. I'm just going to come change direction. I'm going straight from the 15, changing direction through the 11. And then I'm going to just pop down through these two 11s so that I am through a sticky outy on the outside edge now. And I'm going to flip my work over and I'm going to pop my crystal in. Right, I've got my crystal, the front of my crystal is resting on my middle finger. This is the pointy back where we're going to cinch in the back of our beadwork to totally trap our crystal. And we're going to do that by dropping down to just using size 15. So round five is a round of 15s just passing through each sticky outie and each time giving your thread an extra tug in. So now I'm going through a 15 on the corner just pulling in. Each time picking up one 15 and going through the next sticky outy. And you're going to do that the whole way around, one at a time, each time pulling in. You'll need to reposition, so just turn it in your fingers, making sure that the corners of your crystal stay in line with the corners of your beadwork. So 15s all the way around and I will join you for the step up into round six. Just keep pulling that thread in. I'm coming up to adding in my last 15 and I'll be passing through the 11 that sits just ahead of the first 15 that we added in this round and up through that 15 as well to step up. Give that thread a good tug. Now it's still not secure. We're going again. Another round. And we're going to do 15s on the sides in between these sticky outy 15s. And when we come to a corner, here's my first corner. We're not going to pick up a bead to go between those two 15s. We're just going to bead straight through. So I need one bead to get there. I've got one 15 and I'm going to go through the first corner 15 and through the 15 corner bead on the other side. You can see there's no bead in between there. My 15 is coming between this one and the corner. Now you're really pulling in and pulling in tight. So I've come around the first corner. Now I'm going to do three 15s up the side. Here comes the first one into that one. Pulling in all the while. Here comes the second one. Into the next 15.
And here comes the third one. We're coming up to the next corner. There you can see all those 15s make up the corner. So I've picked up a 15 and I'm coming through the first corner one and through the second one without picking up a bead on that corner. Pull in tight. So I've got one side and two corners done. I'm going to continue the whole way around. So it's three 15s up the side and then straight through those corner ones without adding a bead. Just about ready to add in my last little 15. Pull my thread in tight and now you should feel like that crystal is going nowhere. So there's the back and there is the neat front. Uh, that's where you can stop if you want to just create a bezel to make it into a simple ring. But as I mentioned, I am now going to show you how to embellish around the outsides, putting on the drop at the bottom and the ear wire at the top. It's time for part two of our bezeling, uh, where we take this simple be bezel, which is beautiful in its own right, but we just zhuzh it up a bit and we add a bit of glamour, glitz and glam with the sparkly crystals yeah, and turn it into a beautiful earring. You could stop there. So don't add the drop, don't add the ear wire and have that as your ring instead, which is equally beautiful. So it's up to you where you take this or you attach a jump ring to the top here and have that as a beautiful pendant on a neckline piece. So it's up to you how you run with this, but we're gonna start the next section. Also, just to add in before we start, you'll see that we've turned the, the crystal. So instead of being square on as a square, we've turned it into more of a diamond shape, so on its side. So now my corners, north, south, west and east are going to have the four mil bicone with an ear wire at the top, a drop at the bottom. Down the sides we're going to have the little three mil crystals <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll get finished. So I have actually come all the way around and you'll see if I zoom back in that my thread is exiting an 11 on the side there so I am now ready to start this side here, I'm going to be doing the little three mil crystals coming down the side to the corner where I'm going to do a four mil. Right, I've come through my beads and here's my thread exiting this 11. So one, two, you can see there's a 15 at the top, then there's two 11s either side of the 15 and it's the 11 that's sitting underneath the 15 that I'm sticking out of. So there's my thread coming off. For this first few, I'm going to be zoomed in. So on the sides, we're doing the three mil bicone. So I'm going to pick up a little black 15, a three mil bicone, and another black 15. <coughs> and I'm going to come across the gap. Let's just make sure this is on camera. So there's my thread coming out of this 11 and I'm coming across the gap and through this 11 on the side here. Now initially everything will sit perfectly because they're not jostling for space but the way to get them to sit straight and to sit beautifully because sometimes this thread can twist is to just pull that crystal out slightly with your finger and your thumb so that the seed beads fall down to the bezel and then you can pull your thread through and you've got your seed beads sitting flush against the bezel and then you've got um, your crystal sticking out. So we're on a corner here now. Let's just keep this zoomed in. So you can see my thread is coming out of this 11 here and I'm going to come all the way across to the 11 on the other side. So it's quite a big gap this one. So we're going up a level. We're going to pick up one of our round 11s that we were using, a 4 mil bicone, the black one, and another round 11. And we're coming straight across to the 11 
on this side here. Sorry, there we go. I've got it in now. So from that 11 on the side, straight across all the 15s to the 11 on the other side. Now this is a slightly bigger one, but again, you can just pull the crystal out slightly so that the seed beads fall flush against the bezel. So with that first four mil bicone in place on the corner, we're ready to make our way down to the southern tip where we can ha add in our pendant drop. So I've got another two of my little ones to go. So that's a little 15, a three mil bicone. Sorry, we want a black 15, a three mil bicone for the contrast and a black 15. And I'm gonna come straight across to the next 11. And again, I'm going to just give them a helping hand to sit neatly in place in case the thread wants to twist on itself. And I'm going to do one more of those, a black 15, a three mil bicone and a black 15. And I'm coming across to the 11. That's just before the next corner. This one is a bit tight. My needle wants to go through a 15 at the same time. There we go. And again, you can see it starts to get a bit tight. So just giving them a little helping hand to get into the right place works. Right, we're gonna do our southern corner. So that's with a big round 11, a four mil bicone, and another round 11. And we're gonna go all the way across to the 11 on the other side. Now you're going to work through your beads and I tend to come around on the back side because therefore if you do happen to miss a bead the thread will be on the back and you won't see it but work through your beads and you want to I don't want to go through all of them you want to be exiting the four mil bicone so I'm just going backwards now till I get to a point where I can come up through that one. I want to come up through the 11 that sits to the side of the bicone. Oh, don't want to get my thread caught. Now I can come up the 11 on the bicone and I can come through the bicone as well. <clears throat> so there we, if I bring this one into shot then you can see as well. So we're at the base and my thread is exiting the four mil bicone and now I need to pick up the seed beads that I need to attach my drop and I'm going to start with a silvery 15 and a black 15. Then I'm going to pick up three of my 11s, one, two, three. And then I'm going to pick up a black 15. And I'm going to let those all drop down to that bicone there. I'm going to come through the hole in my pendant drop. Oops, I didn't mean to pull that out of shot, sorry. Now I'm going to come up the other side. So. I need a matching black 15 on the side and I'm going to pick up one 11. If I just spread this out a little and maybe if we zoom. So I've got black 15 and 11. I'm going to ignore the black 15 and the 11 that sit right next to the pendant and I'm going to take my needle through the next two 11s. And when I pull the threads through tight, just holding everything in place while I pull through, it's gonna pull the drop up. And now I just need a little black 15 and a little silver 15 this is to match the two that are coming out of the bicone on the left and I'm going to go into the bicone 
from the right. Make sure you pull your threads nice and tight and you'll get a lovely, neat little attachment there for your drop. Let me just move that up a bit so you can see. And then you're ready to go on. So I'm going to come out down through the 11 that is on this side of my bicone. And then I want to come through the 11 that I originally passed through when I added that 4 mil bicone. Pull everything in tight and you're ready to do your two little 3 mils up this left hand side here till you get to the corner and you add in your 4 mil, then another two 3 mils and we're going to do the ear wire together. So here I am coming out of an 11. I'm going to pick up a little black 15, a 3 mil bicone, a black 15 and I'm going to take my needle straight across to the next 11. My needle is bent slightly now, so it wants to go down and under. And I want it to just go through and come out the other side. And again, this one might need a little bit of a wiggle so that those little 15s sit up against the bezel and then your crystal is on the outside. So I'm going to add in one more, then I'm going to do my four mil on the corner and then two more three mils and I'll join you back up at the top. I'm up at the top, so I'm going to add in my big bicone. That's an 11 seed bead, a four mil bicone and an 11 seed bead and across to the 11. You can see I've got just one more three mil to add in here. Now you can either go back, backwards along the back of your work, pop out through the bicone now and add your ear wire. I'm going to add in the last little crystal and then go backwards. So I've got one more crystal, which is a black 15, a three mil bicone and a little black 15 and that's coming across. It gets difficult to see because you've got things in place now, but I'm coming across to this 11 here. Can I zoom in and you can see. And just give that a helping hand to sit properly. Then I'm going to move around through the beads at the back and I'm going to work through these beads at the back here and pop up through that 11 that's on the side of the bicone and then come through the bicone and we'll be ready to add on the ear. Right, my thread is exiting that 4 mil bicone and we're going to add the ear wire in a similar way to the way we added the drop. So we're going to start with 15s and I'm going to pick the contrasting 15 to sit alongside the bicone and that's the silver one then a black 15 and then I'm just going to pick up two of my 11s let those drop down to the bicone and we're going to come through the loop of the ear wire and back down through the two 11s Hold everything in place. Don't get your thread caught around your crystals like mine is. Classic case of do as I say and not as I'm doing. And it slipped out of there. There you go. Let's pull this through. And now I just need my little 15s to come around the other side. So it will be a black one first and then a silver one that will sit alongside the bicone. And I'm going to come through the bicone from the opposite side now.
So when you pull your threads through tight, you've got a really neat finish at the top of that bicone. Then all that's needed to do is for you to weave this thread away and end it off. And you've got a beautiful pair of vintage looking earrings that started out with a simple bezel around the cushion cut crystal. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I'm sorry for my croaky voice, but I needed to get something filmed. It's been a while. And hopefully you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you've got any questions, pop them as always in the comments below. And I do get to them. Sometimes it takes me a couple of days, but I do get to them and I do answer them all. So thank you so much for your time and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.